Hi everybody, thank you again for joining us on StickyAlbums.com. This is Nate Grohek, I'm the founder, and I'm super excited to have Jeffrey Shaw on the phone with us today. Jeffrey, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you, Nate? I'm doing great. So today we are going to talk about this term that Jeffrey coined today when we were in the pre-call called shoot and serve. There is a lot of debate going on right now, and first of all, I like, I like setting the stage. We're not going to, this is not gonna be like an insulting, a complaining conversation. We are all about having this conversation move forward in, in thinking about this in the gray. There is no black and white when we're talking about being a, a product photographer or a shoot and burn or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, serving the client is not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It is not mutually exclusive between those two things. You can, you can serve your customer in a number of ways you structure your business. And there's a lot of gray, so we're gonna explore that. But coming back to, I think, what really matters most is how we are serving our customers. Because in a com competitive landscape, competitive business, that's what's always going to set us apart. So take it away, Jeffrey. I wanna hear what you have to say about, about that. Awesome. Thanks, Nate. And I'm, I'm glad to be able to, as you said, move the conversation forward. I think we've spent, uh, in the industry, there's been so much conversation amongst photographers, uh, creating controversy between shoot and share versus product-based photographers. But what's not being spoken about is what serves the client. And ultimately, we are in service-oriented businesses. Uh, and, and I'll even share with you kind of my, my more personal views on this is that you know, I am a business coach, and my objective as a coach is to uh, support photographers, small business owners in moving their businesses forward. That's my action, but my more global intention is I think small business owners can make a huge impact on the world, and particularly the way our communities and consumers experience their lives, much more so than big corporations can. I mean, big corporations nowadays are trying to make themselves look small. They're trying to look like us. We're already there. We're the, we're the small business guys who are already there, we have an unbelievable power. I mean, there's a there's a ad campaign for a bank going on now to uh, to learn how to bank human, and, and I love the whole theme of it because they're trying to be like us, the small business owners. So we have an amazing amount of power, and that's the space and, and where I want to reside in. And in so much of this conversation about shoot and share versus product based, it's overlooking the service. And uh, so I'd like to clarify what I believe service to clients is all about. Uh, and, and make no bones about it. I mean, my feeling is I do not think shoot and share, shoot and burn is really serving clients. And I'll tell you why. Um, the reason I feel that is because I think it's catering to the lowest denominators of life. You know, uh, you've, I'm sure you've heard of Maslow's theory, the triangle. And, Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. At the bottom of that triangle is survival. You know, what, is, what, is, what exists in survival is fear and money. You know, so money is an incredible energy, but it, it's rooted in survival. You know, we've always, whether it was uh, bartering cattle or what, you know, we, it's uh, the exchange of something has always been about survival. Yep. So although we aspire for money, money actually sits kind of in, in the realm of survival. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It's so this idea of, you know, shoot and share, shoot and burn, and not serving our clients is really about the, the photographer's fear and not wanting to make sales and right. be personal relationships. And it's based on the most, you know, uh, pandering to the most cost effective way for the clients. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's rising. Not only is it not rising our industry anywhere, it's not rising the world anywhere. Um, I would like to see a lot more emphasis put on in our industry what product photographers can do for their clients, how we can produce portraits, albums, and products that truly elevate their their lives. Absolutely, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I think that there's a lot of, um, we get really hung up in, when, when I think about the, when I first got into the business of, of shooting portraits, I really, I keep trying to revisit those feelings and those fears that you were talking about, that was the lowest common denominator, where I, I loved, I was so into taking pictures and the gear and now in the art of making, taking a good photograph. And that was so much more fun to learn about and to, to, to dive into. 
And then when it came to the business side of it, I just stumbled across like this what this world of oh, online sales. It's like it's like this warm, cozy blanket. Like I don't like I remember the fantasy and I would tell people I was showing off like I think I was using Zenfolio. It's like check it out. I can set how much profit I want to make and I can do all this stuff in like this internal like I, I can balance between uh, an introvert and an extrovert pretty easily. And my introvert was in heaven. I was like, oh my gosh, I can just work on my art, put it up, and make a bunch of money. Yeah. And of course, I got to learn the hard way that this just isn't how it works. No. This, um, this so a- as I share my own kind of background, and I've shared with the audience before, I've, I've, I've done a high school senior portraits for maybe four years. You've been in the business. You've got a really unique perspective of, of all the places it's, it's come from and it's gone to. So you've been doing portraits for the last 30 years, and now you are also doing some really cool coaching with other people working on their businesses too. So before we jump back into this concept of service, lay the foundation of your, your background and where, where you came from in the, in the industry. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I've been in the business for 30 years. I was 20 years old when I when I started. So I've seen you know an incredible evolution. And 30 years ago, when I went into business, my competition, if you will, were painters. They weren't photographers. Yeah. You know, I was out to compete with the the painters that were you know clients were spending five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to have a portrait painted of their children. And I was like, wow, I can produce a better likeness for a fraction of the price. And like a lot of photographers, therefore, our original business business <clears throat> business models were very product based. Uh, and you know, we've had to evolve. Uh, and and that's to be honest with you, that's one of my strengths as a as a business person, I think, is that I have a very, I get a really big intuitive hit on what the needs of my clients are, and I don't mean just the, those I'm working with, but what does their life look like? What's the world look like? I think I'm, uh, I don't think any of my personal relationships would agree at the degree that I'm that sensitive to people's needs, but like with my clients, I am. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I get a really strong intuitive hit, and and I just don't think you can fight that and shouldn't bother. Um, you know, it, it's. One of the best marketers and one of the strongest business books I would ever recommend for somebody to read is The Marketing Lessons of the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Okay. Amazing, amazing business book. Uh, because in the 60s, as a popular band, they totally got, even then, that there was no way of stopping the sharing of music. Yeah. People were showing up at their, ba- their concerts with their tape recorders. They were never going to stop it any more than... You know, uh, we were ever going to stop the sharing of images. It's we're, it's not going to happen. So you either evolve with it and learn how to use it, but more importantly, I think you you get into the heads of the people that want to share their music or share uh, you know photographs. You get into their heads and and help them. Right. Uh, yeah. I remember. I've got. A, I worked with a buddy who was. He traveled. To, I think over a dozen Grateful Dead shows and all the great tapes. And instead of they saw this happening instead of being like shunning you over or trying to confiscate gear. They were like, no, here's an output. For Bring it on hand. stage. Like yeah. here, here's an output. Here, get, get like the actual yeah. input from our mics. Don't use your own mic. Here's an output right into your exactly. tape deck. So, cause what they got is what I would, and something I'd like photographers to really get is that we, we have to not believe our clients are stupid. They're not. Okay. They can distinguish the difference in quality between the image they want to share and still choosing portraits. My motto in all of this is digital is for sharing, prints are for preserving. Okay? I make a strong distinction with my I'm all for the share. That's why I love your product, Nate. That's why I'm here. I love a sticky albums to me is the best fit for a product-based photographer. Because it supports and I'll you know I'll go to town for you because I really believe it. And I also think they're completely underutilized. I, I we could do a whole other call on the ways that I use sticky albums that beyond. I mean, I have a clothing guide that's a sticky album, awesome. so my clients can download it to their their mobile device and go shopping for their kids' clothes based on the guide of clothing suggestions I've put as a sticky. That's great. Um, I do a sticky album of all my speaking presentations, so audience members can leave with the slides that I've shown, so that it. they can replay that presentation in their, their, moment, in their mind or on their phone over and over again. Okay. Incredible applications. I love the way it supports the joy and sharing that our clients want to the space they want to be in, and it does not deter from portrait sales when it's done well. And by doing, being done well, it's because you're supporting their sharing, but 
the principles of your business is still about serving them and serving them with high quality products. Right. Absolutely. So when I when I talk about service, I my background is I was a bartender for six years, and you talk about anticipating the client's needs, and over time things change. And people like I remember when the movie was it Sideways? What's the one with the wine where like Merlot dropped? Yeah. I think it was Sideways like, or something. Like it yeah. fell off fell off the map. Like overnight, all of a sudden, everybody was drinking Pinot Noir. <laughs> <laughs> and could you fight it? No, everybody just ran right with it. Um, and it found a way to make it, an, to play off of that weird, quirky evolution. Now, is are there a lot of commonalities between that and, and what's happening in the photography business? I think the key, the key point we're making is things are changing and we need to evolve with it. But back to the original point we're making is whether you have been in the business for a while or not, uh, I feel like a really good guide for me in, in where I need to go in my business is where I'm feeling a little like that, that, that uh, like the insecurity or fear. It's like I know that's just outside of my comfort zone. That's exactly where I need to go. If, if having like a real sales, an in-person sales session is just outside of your comfort zone, it's incredible how what that can do for your business when you start having those in person or you can start with an over the phone sales session where if your clients are um, are remote or something like that, you can still have that awesome conversation. And I think on your I was reading on your blog the distinction between what we think of traditionally when we say sales and what you and I really mean. I like to call it like authentic sales. Mm -hmm. Talk about the distinction in how, how being in sales is actually the best way, the most effective way we can serve our customers. Exactly. It is. That's that's I coach to that. I mean, it's one of the strongest transitions you can make is from um, a feeling of sales to service. You know, but let's even unwind from there further. There are very, for very good reasons uh, that sales feels a little creepy to people. Okay. Because the distinction has never been made between traditional business and service business. Um, our world has existed for decades in a traditional business model that has never really been, there's never been a clear distinction uh, between that and, and service based uh, businesses. The, and, and that's what creeps people, photographers are purpose driven. Okay. Nobody wakes up one day and thinks, wow, being a portrait photographer is the ultimate way to get wealthy. Like, it's just not the greatest business model inherently in the world, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a purpose-driven profession. When you're purpose-driven in what you choose to do, making money is going to be in conflict to that because we've only been taught a traditional business model. And traditional business says sales is taking. Sales is about me taking something from you. And that inherently gets in the spine of purpose-driven people because it's not who we are. Photographers are not takers, they're not greedy. They, every photographer I've ever met is all about bringing more life into anything and everybody around them. Okay, I, I truly believe photographers are some of the most genuine, uh, wonderful people. Uh, very purpose-driven profession and I'm proud, incredibly proud to be part of this profession because of that. So being in business is in conflict to that until you are supported in understanding that you simply need to change the model the world has taught us for years. That sales is not about taking. Yep. Sales is actually our biggest act of service. Yeah. Uh, the example I like to give is you go to the doctor. We don't go to the doctor for the exam. We go to the, for the doctor for the results of the exam. You know, um, Same thing. Like As a photographer, people come to us and, and that's why when you switch to in-person sales or in some form of that, all my sales are, are done um, via a screen share. My clients have a chance to preview their photographs for a couple weeks, uh, but make no final decisions until they have the benefit of my expertise when we do a screen share meeting. And we look at them together, and, and what they're really getting from me, like the doctor, is my advice, my expertise. That's what they've paid for, you know? Uh, and that's, usually we have to take, I have to coach photographers into stepping into their confidence and their expertise. And it takes a little while to rewire the mind and body away from that, oh my gosh, this is so creepy. And then when you, the, when you get a positive response from your clients, you start realizing, wow, I'm serving people. That's what you start to feed on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always amazed when photographers say, I can't believe a client chose exactly what I suggested. I'm like, yes, 
<laughs> when a doctor tells you what medication to take, do you not take his advice? <laughs> exactly. You no. Know? It, it reminds me. This is. I'm going to pull back. A, for your your conversation just sent me right back to when I was first starting out, before I was even a pro. Um, I remember because. <clears throat> I, I did the total cliche where all of my friends were like, oh my gosh, Nate, your pictures are great. You could pay for them. And I was like, oh, no way. And it was just very slow. I kept having to hear that over and over again. I finally started charging a little bit. Well, first it was free, then a little and a little. And one of my friends, she she got really into photography too. And she's like, Nate, I really want to be able to take pictures like you do of my kids. And so I remember just walking her through the camera. And it, what, there's the, a, a book you and I share favorite of is uh, Made to Stick, where they talk about the curse of knowledge, where just because we forget, it's so easy to forget as photographers how much has gone into what we know. Like how many hours, how many books we've read, how many trains we've been to, how to run our camera, how to do lighting, all of this stuff. And then I had forgotten this. I, I, I didn't even realize when I was referring a camera to my friend that I had just spent the last three years like just gi giving myself like an MBA in photography. And I was like, oh yeah, I think I got this one and this. And she, I re I'll never forget, I followed her up with her like a, a month later with, I was like, oh wow, how you like your new camera? And she's just like, oh, they're just, they're just, they're, I'm not able to figure it out really. And the pictures I'm taking don't look like the ones you take. And I just, I felt my heart sink. I was like, oh, I just didn't, I didn't serve my friend. and referring to her this ridiculous camera she didn't need but it was the one that I was excited about and I think that when we are walking through our clients through the journey of hiring a photographer and picking just there's so many steps that we can pull apart it's picking which images that's hard to do that's one of the hardest things I had to learn as a pro is I would when I first started I would deliver like several hundred images in a portrait session it's like they don't want to look at that they're no. hiring us to pick the best yeah. that's one little tiny thread the next thread is which pictures will look good where yeah. how big should i print them what are the different ways they can be printed like there is so much complexity mm -hmm. that as experts we forget yeah. and we assume that our customers just know all this stuff when i coach photographers who have other staff members do their sales uh, particularly those like high school seniors and, and the, uh, the parts of our business that are more volume and the photographers typically have somebody else to do the sales. One yeah. thing I'll, I'll always suggest is have your sales, arm your salespeople with your artist picks. You know, just pick your five, ten. You may want to show 30, 40, 50. I, I agree with you. I don't believe in showing, you know, an abundant of photograph because I think, especially now, my goal for my clients is to make their life simple. Yeah, right. So, um, I think cre creating simplicity for people nowadays has an unbelievable value. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's kind of what I call the balance between being thorough and simple. Like, you know, you have to be thorough, but you have to figure out how to deliver it in a really simple way. And that, that's the magic formula of being in business right today. Uh, so by having the photographers say, hey, these are my top five, these are the top 10, and arming your salesperson with that, you know, that's, that's what people are going to go with. But I, I want to pick up on another point you made. Um, again, could be a whole other conversation. Uh, the fact of the matter, you were talking about your friend and the camera. The fact of the matter is, today, it is not so difficult to, to get as good of a photograph. Yeah. Okay, the, the thing that has the, had the biggest impact on every industry, and I don't, I've yet to figure out an industry it hasn't had an impact on, is information equality. Okay, it used to be most professions had more information about something than the consumer of that did. Take take car dealers. Okay, we now have we can get more information about a car we want to purchase than that car dealer knows. Okay, and in our industry, the fact of the matter is it's not so hard. To pull off a good photograph, people are pulling off amazing photographs on their iPhones. Yeah. What makes the difference then? What makes the difference in hiring a professional is our service and our products. Yes. That's my point. It's the products that we can produce that they can't. 